five seconds. I do not know much about international law, but every person who has to dabble in public affairs inevitably comes up against it and has to take the advice of experts. I have a vague recollection that connected with this idea of international law, there were at various times in the history of Europe concepts like the Holy Alliance, a certain number of countries binding themselves together for various reasons against other countries or other forces which did not go along with their thinking. That of course is contrary to the very concept of internationalism. Today we see certain tendencies of the revival of holy alliances. They are not called by that name but certain groups of nations function more or less on the basis of the Holy Alliance idea. They consider themselves the center of the world and accept, expect other countries to fall in line. This may have some justification but it does put these other countries in an embarrassing position. Either one joins the Holy Alliance or one is outside the pale of international law in a sense. The emergence of Asian and African countries as independent nations and this return to the Holy Alliance idea make it important that concepts of international law should be examined closely. Let us take the United Nations. I think it was supposed to be an international organization inclusive of all the independent nations of the world. There is a tendency, however, to regard it as something less than that, a tendency which I suppose emanates from the Holy Alliance idea. This in turn has affected other problems also. Politicians and statesmen who discuss such problems are naturally influenced by their political approach and so we do not get what might be called a scholarly objective estimate. Further, it so happens that what we generally get is the non-Asian or non-African side. I respect that side but it is possible that the scholars of that persuasion might not bear in mind some aspects which would be obvious to Asian scholars and jurists. Therefore, it is desirable that the various aspects of international law should be considered objectively and in a scholarly manner by the eminent lawyers and jurists of Asia and Africa. Nowadays, many words and phrases are used, the dictionary meaning and significance of which have changed completely in the hands of politicians, that is, people of my tribe. We used to know, for example, what belligerency was. Belligerency, I believe, is defined as waging a regular and recognized war. It must be regular and it must be recognized. Otherwise, I suppose it is guerrilla fighting which is not belligerency. And in so far as states or rule, rulers are concerned, the opposite of belligerency used to be neutrality that is not siding with a power which is belligerent 
or which is waging an active and recognized war. Yet, delegates here must know how vaguely the word neutrality or neutralism as it is sometimes called is used now, sometimes as a term of abuse, sometimes in a different way, but mostly in a manner which does not describe what is meant exactly. As I understand the terms belligerency and neutrality in relation to powers refer to a state of war or to countries not joining a war. But as everyone knows, these words are used even when there is no active war. If a country is supposed to be net neutral today, then presumably some other country which is not neutral should be described as belligerent and yet that would be a wrong description because the other country is not engaged in regular or recognized warfare. I do not quite know how international law or jurists of repute would define what is called Cold War which is presumably some kind of suspended belligerency. All these developments create problems for politicians and statesmen. I do not suppose that juristic definitions solve such problems. Nevertheless, they might clear the air a little and I hope that an eminent body of scholars and jurists will throw light on these terms so that at least our thinking may become straight. As I said, we find today a return to some extent to the idea of the old holy alliance backed by military pacts and economic measures. I should say that there is more than one holy alliance behind all these all this lies enormous danger to the world in case of war i take it that international law is meant primarily to prevent war its purpose is to settle problems and disputes by methods other than war war is an absence of law it is true that so far international law does not have behind it the same strength that domestic law does. But its main purpose is the avoidance of war. Almost everybody in the wide world dislike the idea of war today because it is so dangerous. How can jurists and lawyers help in the avoidance of war? They cannot help directly in political developments, but they can do much here. Stop.